Hello, today I am in Amsterdam at Waternet, where I will speak with Daniel Goedbloed, Program Manager of Amsterdam Rainproof. And we will talk about one of the main challenges that Waternet is facing in Amsterdam, and that is making the city rainproof. What is it, Amsterdam Rainproof? It's actually a, a program, it's actually an, um, uh, a network approach, a capacity building uh, uh, organization with the main uh, goal to making the city uh, rainproof in 2050, actually meaning uh, no um, um, damage during extreme rainfall events with downpours, and in the same time actually using the rainwater as more like benefit for greening and making the city more, more attractive. And uh, we do this uh, on the one hand by creating more awareness in the city, and on the other hand creating more mainstreaming so that when people are working on the city, so when, we are, when you work on your roof, on your garden, or when something is done in a park, on a street, yeah. you incorporate rainproof as one of the uh, things in your work. And in that way, uh, you slowly, uh, um, in step by step, uh, make the city rainproof. So why did Waternet take the initiative to start up Amsterdam Rainproof? Uh, in Copenhagen in 2011, there was an extreme uh, downpour 150 millimeters of rain in approximately one to two hours, and there was a lot of damage. So 1.5 million, uh, 500 million euros on damage, and they incorporated a plan of 1.5 billion to make the city more uh, rainproof, a cloudburst management plan. And then what? And I thought, well, okay, um, is Amsterdam actually vulnerable for these kinds of downpours? Because we haven't had such an event in Amsterdam itself. We did a GIS analysis of the city. And then we saw, yeah, there are actually lower-lying areas in the city where uh, in such an event uh, there would be uh, damage. Uh, but the problem was that actually uh, there was no awareness on this because we have never encountered such a, a downpour, of course. And in the same time, Waternet is actually responsible for the sewage, the, the drainage system in the city. And everybody is looking at Waternet to, to more or less solve this kind of problem when it would occur. But when you look at the solutions, it's not in increasing the sewer system or increasing the surface water. The solutions are more to increase the sponge wor working of the city. So to hold back rainwater where it falls, in your roof or in your garden, or make space, temporary space in your streets, in your parks, so you can actually deal with all of this rainwater and use it in a good way. So can you tell us a bit more about the program? What's the approach? So we have uh, more or less the citizens approach and uh, more the, the public approach on the governmental side. And for the governmental side, what we did is actually we um, influenced uh, policy uh, uh, plans, so incorporating rainproof in, into policy. Mm -hmm. uh, also looking at all of kinds of work processes in the, in the city and incorporating uh, rainproof in these work processes. What we also did is we did a wet spot analysis of the city. Okay. And uh, well, I can show you it, uh, how that yes. works. We calculated uh, uh, with a model where um, there would be uh, water on the streets for a, a heavy downpour, 60 millimeters of rain. And you can see where we made priorities of, of areas where there's actually a lot of rain on the streets. Yes. And you would say, well, this is a priority area where we have to uh, start working uh, uh, and try to uh, reduce damage. For instance, the red ones we want to solve in a period of five years, okay. incorporating it in normal work in the city. And if that doesn't, uh, if there is nothing planned as normal work, okay. We're going to make it a separate project uh, to solve uh, uh, this wet spot. And then we also have these cloudburst opportunity maps, which is actually shows how um, the urban area is going to look like uh, incorporating rainproof. So where are we going to transport uh, rainwater through the streets to the surface water when it rains really hard? Where are we going to temporarily store uh, water in, in parks or in, for instance, water squares? Or where are we going to store it in the streets, greening the, the streets and trying to infiltrate rainwater into the ground? And this really gives a, it's like a blueprint for the designers. So when they're working on uh, a street like this, mm -hmm. they know, well, okay, when we have to take rainproof into account, we're going to look at a certain design which uh, uh, um, um, falls into... Uh, is. So that was the, the governmental side. What we also see is how we are actually approaching citizens. And uh, approaching citizens is a, is a completely different way. So what we're really doing is 
trying to uh, incorporate community building. We have a community uh, manager working for us in the, mm -hmm. in the team. We're looking at uh, all kinds of stakeholders in the city. And what we like to do is actually to try to uh, involve intermediates, to look at, for instance, uh, garden centers yeah. as uh, uh, um, actually entities where we can uh, communicate our message to the, to the citizens because the citizens will go to the garden centers when they want to redo their garden. Yeah. Uh, and then they can actually see what kind of measures you can put in place. Mm -hmm. We did uh, uh, workshops with them, learning them from what Rainproof is about, what the problems are, and how people with gardens, how they can incorporate Rainproof measures in their garden. And for the garden centers, is actually they can look at what kind of products they would want to like to sell to the, to the people. And it's actually... a a better way to get uh, um, to the people uh, than spreading news with, with putting in flyers in their, in their uh, uh, mailbox. So it's really a network, right? So it is. It's really a network approach. Yeah. Also looking at, uh, for instance, uh, insurance companies, because uh, insurance companies, uh, uh, their customers, they have, for instance, water damage because of uh, uh, downpours. And then you can actually have them communicate to their customers saying, well, okay, if you're living in a low-lying area, why not build like something to keep out the water from your uh, front door? Uh, uh, when you have a basement where you're uh, uh, living in, uh, you have to really have a pump and to really keep the water out and these kinds of things. So really communicating with these intermediaries. Of course, we have, of course, a digital platform where we share all kinds of information with everybody in the city and where actually people can also share what they're doing with other people. So they can show their projects online and other people can say, hey, well, what's been done on gardens in the city? And you, you can select gardens and then you see all of the gardens which have been rainproofed. And then you can, uh, you be, can, inspired. Yeah, you can yeah. be inspired and see yeah. what, what they do. Okay, well, thank you, Daniel, for You're introducing welcome. us to yeah. Amsterdam Rainproof. So, we now know about the challenges of Amsterdam to making the urban water system resilient to climate change and especially to intense rainfall events. Have you thought about what you can do, maybe in your city or in your hometown, to making it more climate resilient? Every drop counts. <laughs>